Let folly praise that fancy loves. I praise and love that child whose heart no thought, whose tongue no word, whose hand no deed defiled. I praise him most, I love him best. Oh, praise and love is his, while him I love, in him I live and cannot live amiss. Love's sweetest mark, land's highest theme, man's most desired light. To love him life, to leave him death, to live in him delight. He mine by gift, I his by debt, thus seed to other due. First friend he was, best friend he is, all times will try him true. Though young yet wise, though small yet strong, though man yet God he is, as wise he knows, as strong he can, as God he loves to bless. His knowledge rules, his strength Defends his love doth cherish all his birth our joy, his life our light, his death our end of In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My Mother, preserve me this day from mortal sin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Sir. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, preserve me this day from mortal sin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Sir. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. 
my mother, preserve me this day from mortal sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the 13th of July. On the general calendar of the Church, there is no feast. But on the informal calendar of those who love her, today is the day chosen for the celebration of Our Lady under the title of Rosa Mystica, Mater Ecclesia. Our Lady, the mystical rose, the mother of the Church. More about that one later. So we send our best wishes to you wherever you are. Uh, you know we've called out each day many of the places where we have people who are listening. You are listening from some place wherever you are. Um, whatever the weather, we send you our very best wishes and hope that God is blessing you abundantly and that your spiritual life is progressing or changing, whichever way it is, that you are on the road towards heaven. I want to speak firstly a little bit about this tartan that you can see here. This is the tartan, which is the same kind as is worn by the Bonnie Prince that you see at the beginning of the program. It's in fact the Royal Tartan, but uh, it's a tartan. The thing about a tartan actually is, and that is very attractive about it, is that it's made out of many crosses, which is like our life, surely. But these crosses are all coloured, which reminds us of the resurrection, which is beautiful. So it should be or could be and is now uh, a very Christian significance to the Scottish tartan. And that is that uh, because our infant Jesus of the Highlands and Islands, which is his official title, commonly known to everybody else as the Bonnie Prince, which is a very nice name for him because he's very bonny, which means beautiful. He's a fine looking little prince. And uh, we see him in his image and you see at every beginning of every program. He's uh, sitting there on the stone that crowned the kings of Scotland called the, the Stone of Scone. Spelt like scone, the thing we eat. Uh, he's sitting on that. The kings were crowned on. It goes right back to Jacob, uh, the st uh, who anointed the stone. So that's the stone that Jacob had anointed. And uh, but he's out in the wilderness, and he's alone. And he shouldn't really be alone because a king should be surrounded by the court of all those who are loyal to him. So that's the Bonnie Prince wearing also the crown of Scotland, and but out in the dark, actually. And he's wearing his kilt, and as I said, it's a, a beautiful thing, because it's a beautiful colour, and it's made up of many crosses. And we have found, uh, just because the image is now getting around the world, and is well loved in certain places, we're finding that people have been able to, as it were, cope with the image of the infant Jesus, whereas they have not been able to cope sometimes with other images of our Lord, because perhaps of pain from, you know, abuse, terrible thing, it's blighting the world. As we see there, the little baby, a uh, little child, with the wounds in his hands and his feet, well, he's certainly there representing uh, abused children. He represents also, I'm sure, the child that is killed in the womb of the mother. And he represents also the wounds that anybody picks up during the first years of their lives that in a way are able to haunt them for the rest of their lives. And so a blessing has been given to this tartan, an official blessing of the church, which is lovely. It's a new thing and it's blessing. It's a blessing for, for healing. And so people are able to have tartan, blankets, uh, blessed with the church's blessing. It becomes then a sacramental, as is, for example, a, a scapula, a rosary. It becomes like that. It's a holy, then a holy garment. And, you know, if you've been a person who has been abused, often doesn't want physical contact. And so for some kind of form of comfort, they're able to wrap themselves in a blanket and say their prayers. Or just to wear a piece of tartan that reminds them of the Bonnie Prince. So it's a it's a it's a blessing of tartan that comes through the, the Bonnie Prince, and uh, through this uh, representation 
of the infant Jesus. Of course, it's not particularly the bonnie prince. It's any. It's really. It's, 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 it's only he's done out as the bonnie prince, but he's really. It's an image of our blessed Lord resurrected. Uh, it's a. It's an image of uh, God the Son. So, the clothing doesn't matter too much. But in a way, you know, in the gospel, it said about the lady. She said, "If only I could touch the hem of his garment, she knew she'd be healed." And so it was given that this. The tartan has been given a special blessing from the church for healing. And so people can have tartan blessed wherever they are and use it as a sacramental, as it were, because the you know, if you if the image of the Bonnie Prince was a, a statue, you could get it and you could kiss it, but it's a, it's a, not, it's actually a painting, a beautiful painting, which you know is in that sense it's two dimensional, but with the with the tartan it becomes almost a three dimensional image. Because you can take the blessed tartan and you know um, you can you can venerate the infant Jesus and as it were you can touch the hem the fringe of his garment as it was done at least two occasions in the Holy Gospel. So I thought I'll just read you the blessing because it gives an idea of actually the direction of all of this. You know, one time people just um, as it were had to get on with life. You know, went through terrible things. People suffered greatly during the Second World War, the First World War. Uh, people suffer today uh, terribly, and children suffer badly. And okay, they carry it into like adults, and you know, uh, they're grinning and bearing it, and have certain things that they shy away from. But in fact, inside them, there is still a little child inside their emotional, their emotional development, and it's beautiful that that can be healed by the image of a little child, uh, the infant Jesus. And there have been some incredible healings. So it's not just, uh, as it were, Scotch mist, as they say. It's not just, a, it's not just something of uh, far for loo. It's actually something very real and is actually healing souls and making them well. And so what a great thing to have. And what a beautiful thing to see that such an old form of, of weaving you know, people have woven the tartan and have fought in the tartan and have danced in the tartan. Sure, you know, it's been on bedspreads, it's been on tables, but in fact it's, a, it's an old form of weaving with crosses built into it. And surely those crosses are symbolic that after suffering people can enter into the joy of the resurrection. And that's what we hope for everybody who receives blessed tartan or has tartan blessed, a blanket, uh, for example, you know, one of these blankets, the famous blankets of Scotland, you know, the, for putting in the car. Originally, travel blankets, they call them. They've got nice fringes on them. It doesn't have to have a fringe, but it's nice to be able to touch the fringe if it's our Lord's fringe. And, uh, and when in difficulty, when in darkness, to wrap themselves in a sacramental and to pray to our blessed Lord, because in the end, you know, psychology does so much good. Don't knock it. Psychology does a lot of good. But in the end, most of these problems are spiritual, and they can be healed, and they are healed by our blessed Lord. And certain souls have a great openness to receive our blessed Lord under this little image of Bonnie Prince, and are healed from, from really deep wounds, that could plague them for years and years and years. But in fact, they're healed. That's good. That's good. And so we rejoice that there is this blessing for, uh, the, the, the rubric says this blessing may be given to any rectangle of tartan for personal use in connection with the infant Jesus of the highlands and islands, including a blanket, a shawl, a scarf, even a small piece of tartan that a person may carry around, you know, sometimes... Some people are, are very afraid. They've had experiences that make it quite valid to be afraid. But they can go. I, I knew a woman once who had to travel across a very wild city and uh, she had a rosary and she said to me, she said, oh, this is my gun. You know, <laughs> she wasn't afraid. She went through the night and she had a rosary in her hand and she felt by that comforted. That's what a sacramental can do. You know, why, why do we wear these sacramentals? We wear them because they're spiritual sources of comfort. 
and that's what we need because we have enemies. The devil prowls around like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. And where's he going to bite? He's going to bite on the wound, whatever wounds people have suffered. And so these forms of comfort become not only, as it were, a human comfort, but they take on a spiritual dimension. So here's the blessing for any form of tartan. Lord Jesus Christ, by whose wounds we are healed, who for the love of a named person, whoever this person is, you, you know, put your name in, suffered the internal pains, you know, our Lord's sacred heart is really a sign of his internal pains. Uh, it's true, he has the wounds in his hands and his feet, but the real wound is probably the one he bears in his heart. And that was when he was mocked and crowned with thorns. He was a king. He was mocked as a king. And so that's something he carries in his heart and exposes to us quite openly the wound of his sacred heart. So the internal wounds are the ones to watch for. The external ones heal easily, but the internal ones don't heal easily. And sometimes it takes a long time for some of those things to heal. Sometimes almost a lifetime. But we can speed it up by, as it were, the comforting balm of our blessed Lord's presence in our, in our lives, but more deeply in our wounded areas that we don't like to touch and don't like to show. Lord Jesus Christ, by whose wounds we are healed, who for the love of, a named person or for us, you could say, suffered the internal pains of betrayal, shame, nakedness, mockery, and to be spat upon, who was slapped in the face, most violently wounded and abandoned to the death of the cross. Do thou, the Lamb who was slain, the Lord of lords and King of kings, under the invocation and thy, of thy guise as infant Jesus of the highlands and islands, our prince, in a plaid, it's a tartan, in a plaid of many colours, Deign to bless this tartan of many coloured crosses in token of thy holy resurrection and joyful victory over humiliations, sufferings and death. That through the radiant and glorious sign of thy cross and through the invocation of thy most powerful name, thou wouldst be pleased to bestow upon the named person or us comfort courage, the healing of our wounds, and an increase in our love of thee. For there is no other name under heaven given to men, whereby we must be saved, and through whom victory is given. Who with the Father and the Holy Ghost lives and reigns forever and ever. Lovely. That's the blessing of Tartan. I want to tell you about it because it is... Fabulous, actually, quite fabulous, and is doing good work. And priests uh, overseas, not in, not I don't know many, a few like we do it here, but people in, in America, priests are blessing Tartan and uh, giving it out because that image of the infant Jesus that we play before and after our little uh, live streaming broadcast, that uh, that that little that little infant Jesus is going into the lives and hearts of many, many people and helping to heal them of their wounds and therefore we couldn't ask for anything better. So if you are such a person, if you would like the comfort of some blessed tartan, you can always uh, get that and um, we've got a few rugs here. If you need them, we can bless them as well with pleasure. That's a lovely thing. And the next thing is to return to, which is also hooked up with this whole business of healing, to return to the, to the Surrender Novena. The Surrender Novena, whereby we cast ourselves on our Lord and surrender to Him in the end, you know. As I say, for all your worrying, what can you do about it? You know, if you stay awake, if you're staying awake at night and worrying, yeah, well, you can't sleep. Why can't you sleep? You can't sleep because you're worried. Why are you worried? Because of what's going to happen tomorrow, or what's going to happen with my job, or what's going to happen with one of my children. Look, 
Why are you wasting your sleep? Why are you not, as we say, the church says every night, like the night prayers that we should all have, the church has a responsory psalm. In manus tuus domine, commend thy spirit of male. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Like, it's over to you, Lord. Into your hands I commend my spirit. The day is over, my worrying should be done. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. And in the words of the, uh, that our Lord gave to this stigmata priest, O oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. That's how we should end the day, with a take care of everything to our Lord. What's the good of going to bed with all your cares when God's given you the night to sleep? So, I mean, don't mean if somebody's dying, you're not supposed to be up with them. Of course you are. If someone's sick, you're supposed to be up with them. Of course. Extraordinary times in our lives when we have... But some people are like this nearly all the time. And these are, these are the people, that if, you're, if that's you, my soul, well, that's who I'm talking to. You should be able to sleep well. You should be able to cast your cares upon the Lord and he will take care of you, says the Holy Scripture. Well, cast your cares upon the Lord properly, not half-handed. As he says, you know, people say, yes, I surrender, but they're holding on at the same time. No, cast, cast. If you have a stone, you, you cast it, you throw it away. You depart from it, you separate yourself from it. So you should be separating yourself from your worry for the night, casting it upon our Lord, and leaving it with him. O oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Ten times. Quite good. Like ten times. That's what you get. That's the penance. Ten times. I haven't got much time. I must carry on. This is the next point that we have here uh, the first hour for the notices in the rosary which we're in at the moment the first half hour followed by the uh, yeah, this first hour the notice half hour for the notice half hour for the rosary then holy mass and thanksgiving then the devotions tonight which will be again the litany of the precious blood and the mass will be the sung mass of our lady because what i want to speak to you about is that today is the day for our Lady Rosa Mystica. This is Rosa Mystica here. This is her statue. And you see she's adorned with a red, a white, a red, and a golden rose across the chest of the Blessed Mother. And this goes back to 1973 years ago, 1947. Our Lady first appeared with her heart with three swords in it. I mean, it's no wonder this, uh, this apparition has had a quite a long time with the church and the church has been struggling about recognizing it because, you know, but today they should, it should be recognized, really. I would think, my, my, my personal vote, but it um, doesn't count for much. But uh, she appeared with three swords. This is very interesting for 1947. I mean, it's not 2007 or 2017 or even 2000, uh, 1970, but 1947. The first sword was for the loss of vocation of a priest or a religious. The second sword was for priests and religious, active priests and religious, living in mortal sin. And the third sword was for priests and religious who commit what Our Lady called the treason of Judas. That while giving up their vocation, they lose their faith, and in fact they become the enemy of the church. I'm not going to get the, I suppose a lot of, not many people in officialdom would want to recognize such a, a statement of these three swords, but that's what they were for. And look what happened. Look what's happened now. Look at the state the church is in now with priests and religious, and how many vocations are lost, and how many have left the priesthood or the sisterhood or the brotherhood, and how many in doing so have also lost their faith, And Our Lady paired next with the three roses, the white rose, the red rose, the golden rose. The white rose is because for prayer. The red rose is for penance, and the golden rose, reparation. Spirit of prayer, spirit of expiation and sacrifice, spirit of penitence or reparation. We have not got a lot of time, but let us briefly go through this and finish off with uh, the other three roses that are worth mentioning. 
So 22nd of October, Our Lady appeared. This The first time was 13th of June 1947. She asked at that time that the 13th of July would henceforth be a feast in honour of Rosa Mystica, her title Rosa Mystica. And then, uh, and then she uh, she appeared with these with these three roses across her chest. We've had a long relationship with this um, devotion, because one of the great old traditional priests, Father Cummins, was a terrific devotee of Our Lady under this title. Well, we have two great statues over here. This one here, it's nice. It's a wooden one, and we've got a bigger one that was on the other island and. Reading these things, I went to get it oh, a month or so ago, a couple of months ago. Funny thing, we had to go across in the boat. We picked up the statue and did a few other things on the other island and came back on the boat. And just as we came into the chapel, there was night prayers in the community were in the litany of Loretto. And just as we walked in the door, the brother was saying, Rosa Mystica. And the brothers were replied, or our pronobis were completely spontaneous and quite shocking, actually, to see that such a coincidence of coming into the chapel at the same time as uh, Our Lady's title under this, that she was here, and uh, Lady Rosa Mystica was actually being called out by the brother. It was quite um, un unnerving type of a, a thing to see. And as I came in, and Father Magdal was in front of me, he said, here there, Rosa Mystica, we just come in the door. And there it was. So, you know, okay. That's a good reason for Our Lady to have appeared with three with three swords in her in her heart, and then it makes sense to have she also appeared with her heart with the three roses a, a red a, a white rose a red rose and a golden rose prayer, penance, reparation. That's what we're called to, and it's more or less the same message of Fatima. She shows her immaculate heart. She um, she says that you know she she wants prayer, penance, and reparation. These things are very important. I'll get but the last apparition, which is one I'd like to speak to you about just now, uh, was an eighth of December, nineteen forty-seven. Okay, so we're going to see three years now. Our Lady appeared, and uh, she had different things to say, basically the same message as you'd expect from uh, Fatima and uh, the Rosary, prayer, reparation, penance, like Lourdes. Same old thing. Penance, penance, penance was Lourdes, you know. And now it's, 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 it's reminding us, though. During this apparition, there were about a thousand people present to see it in the church at Monticiari. There were two instantaneous miracles at the same moment. I'll tell you them. The first was a five-year-old boy who had suffered from polio. Right? We know what that looks like, calipers, the whole thing. Who had suffered from polio and had been brought to the church in his parents' arms who all of a sudden could stand up and walk. Later, he was shown to the crowd on the balcony, jumping up and down. I've seen Our Lady in the church, and she smiled at me. Well, you know, in that case, I'd say seeing's believing. The next one was a 26-year-old who for 14 years had suffered from tuberculosis, TB. That means uh, since she was 14, so she was 26. Since she'd been four, since she'd 14, so 12 years, she'd been uh, had tuberculosis and couldn't speak. At the same moment, as the boy comes to his feet and starts to walk around, this girl gives out a hymn and starts to sing. She later, uh, yes, that's right, she later became a religious. And she completely cured of the tuberculosis, became religious. And uh, she lives for the expiation of the sins of religious and priests. That's the whole point of the Rosa Mystica. That's what she gave her life to. The third miracle is also quite amazing because that all happened there and you could, some people, some people, you know, um, these, um, these people that believe, you know, uh, everything's going to be psychological, uh, they could put it down to mass hysteria or something, you know, but it wasn't mass hysteria, it was two miracles of a little kid who couldn't walk and now he can, and a girl who had TB and in the end and couldn't speak for 14 years, uh, 12 years, and now she's singing. And then she becomes, she's cured of the tuberculosis and becomes a nun. It could be mass hysteria, well, let's bring it on. But it wasn't. This is we're spiritual things here. But in the same town, there was a man who went to the apparitions, but he, his sister, his daughter-in-law couldn't go because she had to stay at home and look after his other daughter. So he had a daughter. This daughter was 36. She had no voice and had no control over her bodily functions. 
you know what that's going to be like. It's pretty difficult. Someone had to stay with her the whole time. So it was her, sis, her daughter, it was her sister-in-law who was sitting there with her, while and she was praying the rosary while the uh, while her father-in-law went to the apparition to see what was going to happen. So she's sitting there with this uh, 36-year-old woman, and she's praying the rosary, and it comes to her. She says to Our Lady, "Dear Our Lady." If you are appearing in the church, she's just saying this quietly, heal. Heal this poor girl. The girl who had never spoken, the mute, she was a mute. A mute with no bodily power over any of her bodily functions and mentally disturbed. Very, very mentally disturbed. So she was complete. She was a complete case. Loud voice carried on right to the end of the rosary with her sister-in-law. Oh, sister-in-law would have been absolutely, uh, totally amazed, so who wouldn't be? And they say that this is the most extraordinary miracle, because there's no chance of ever saying that was mass hysteria. So, there we go. Today, uh, Rosa Mystica Place, uh, Monticiari in Italy, has now got its own church given by, uh, recognised by the bishop. It's gone that far, at least they're giving a church to the many pilgrims who go there. But I was reading also that Satan has three roses, and I'd like to finish with that. Because I've got a couple of minutes left. And that's interesting. Our Lady's three roses, prayer, penance, reparation. Her three roses to show she's the immaculate daughter of the Father. She's the mother of, well, it's a white rose. The red rose to show she's the mother of sorrows and of mercy, the blood of our Lord on the cross. The golden rose to show she's the bride of the Holy Ghost. She's the queen of heaven and earth. Yes, it makes all beautiful sense. But Satan also has his three white roses. Let's go through them. The white rose is quite good, really, I thought. The godless, scientistic, the science, science, godless science, atheism, rationalism, liberalism, modernism, humanism, anarchism, anarchism all the isms, Freemasonic rose, cross, death of God, theology, denial of the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, denial of miracles, denial of the immortality of the soul, denial of the Holy Trinity, the existence of angels, the existence of devils, heaven, uh, heaven held purgatory, papal infallibility, authority of the church, authority of parents, and everything supernatural, the cold kind of cold rose of Satan. His red rose, where he's in league with all the enemies of Christ, the enemies, of, the enemies who, who besmirch the cross, deny the precious blood, the enemies who are found in the symbol of riots, revolution, defiance, bloody power, inhumanity, cruelty, Marxism, communism, dictatorship. Red rose of Satan. When you see it, makes sense. Satan's golden rose, the expression of self deific deification, being gods, power of money, materialism, filthy fashions, unrestrained pleasure, alcoholism, pornography, perversion, superstition, magic, spiritism, Sodom and Gomorrah, demonism, animality, all make sense too, like the Caesars of Rome all down in the ditch in the end, all falling to bits. Satan's got his own three roses, but he will be conquered by the victorious virgin who has the three roses of prayer, her immaculate, her immaculate heart, of penance, standing at the foot of the cross. She's the mother of sorrows and of mercy. She is victorious. And her golden rose, for she is the queen of heaven, and she will put Satan beneath her beautiful feet. Rosa Mystica, pray for us. And the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Te rogamos audino.
Benedictio de omnipotentis, Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, descendat super vos, et maniat semper. Amen. Let holy praise that fancy loves, I praise and love that child whose heart no thought, whose tongue no word, whose hand no deed defiled. I praise him most, I love him best. Oh, praise and love is his, while him I love, in him I live, and cannot live amiss. Love's sweetest mark, land's highest beam, man's most desired light, to love him life, to leave him death, to live in him delight. He mine by gift, I his by debt, thus seed to other due. First friend he was, best friend he is, all times will try. Though small yet strong, though man yet God he is, as wise he knows, as strong he can, as God he loves to be.